Time at Daily Mount, 2-0 win for the Dock. Kieran, you must be absolutely delighted with that result. Fantastic result, it keeps us on top of the table. Um, I think in terms of the, the course of the game, I thought we were worthy of the 2-0 win. And saying that, I thought Bohemians very, very, very strong on the break. A uh, couple of great chances. Dylan Watts had a fantastic chance where a great save from Gary Rogers in the second half. But all in all, I thought they, we got settled very quickly with a goal so early in the game and we pushed on. And I think the one thing that can be said about today's game, and tactically Dundalk were very patient in their build-up and they were um, they didn't rush the play or anything like, or, or, or any aspect of it. So that kind of worked very, very well in their favour. And I think realistically I thought we were worthy of the win but it could have been more but in saying that that could have been like some of the other leagues or League of Ireland results this evening it could have been a 5-3 or 4-2 or whatever so look a 2-0 win keeps us top of the league and it keeps us in touch with Cork City Absolutely uh, you just yeah, there some crazy results all around we're just getting a hold of them here but uh, in terms of back here tonight I think yeah that early goal for me allowed you to kind of grow and I thought you kind of showed a a confidence and a, not an arrogance is, is too strong of a word, but there was you look so composed, you look so fit, you look so strong, you know. Um, and Pat Hoopen again, you know, he does what he's doing, red hot form and, and a knockdown from Duffy, and it's it's one nil, and it's the perfect perfect start. And I thought it could have allowed you really just to to be so composed and get a grip of the game. It, that that for me must be one of the most pleasing things for you guys, that that composure. Very much so because when you look at it, uh, for a long time Dundalk have been relying on players such as Stephen O'Donnell to dictate the pace and the composure of the game whereas tonight you had a player like Chris Shields who's been absolutely excellent he stepped up to that void I think Robbie Benson and Jamie McGrath did an awful lot of unseen work behind, you know in that midfield um, Dylan Connolly he was very very good tonight I thought I thought there was times where he got into the right positions maybe the ball just got ahead of him that little bit and Michael Duffy's Michael Duffy I mean I know that there was talk that Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane and were here tonight and he has spoken about his Republic of Ireland aspirations but um, judging on the performance tonight he's given glimpses of, his, of the quality in which he's able to expose and, and show this, this League of Ireland but realistically I think that the reason why we're composed is that we have options in all positions this season whereas last year we didn't have that and Dundalk are, are, and are now able that the players are very comfortable in their positions but I think as I said this time and time again we're getting the rub of the green we're getting that little bit of luck it's something that we haven't we didn't get last yeah, year true. and this year we're getting it and we're getting it in truckloads so it's it's working to our favour yeah the, like frustration for me seemed to be the biggest thing from a Bo's point of view you know yeah. the couple of decisions may have gone either way you know it was just as you spoke about the rub of the green but it was that I think if, if I could summarise the difference from looking at it as a neutral it was Physicality, you look so much stronger, you look so much fitter. The passing seemed to be a couple of percent faster than them, uh, and you know, the movement was the key. And you know, Bowes they 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 rammed hard pretty in the second half there. They got into the game, you got the sucker punch of the we the second goal, but they still kept going, stepped going, and probably you know. You, you couldn't fault their, their effort in any shape or form really tonight, could you? No, absolutely not. Bows are, an, are a very young, dynamic side. Keith Long wants to play the right game. He wants to play good attacking-based football. He wants to, a bit like Dundalk, he wants to play it from the back. And that is to be, in this league, sometimes you know players talk about the helter-skelter aspect of it, that that's the kind of football that we need to be advertising. And a game like that tonight, you know, it, it, it entices fans because it was tight right up until the very end. You know, one chance for Obehim means midway through that second half it could have been a completely different game so but you talk about Dundalk's physicality and their fitness well that comes down to the fact that Stephen Kenny has employed two very good fitness coaches and Graham Byrne has departed and we have a, we have a new fitness coach in it'll be interesting to see how, what kind of aspects to his development that he'll bring into, into the club but Dundalk have always been a team that they play right up until the 90 minute and they have to be physically fit and mentally ready up until the 90 minute and that's why they've been able to be so competitive on a lot of fronts during the course of the past couple of seasons under Stephen Kenny, particularly in Europe, like I know we're talking about fi fixture con congestion. At one stage, we had to play 12 games in nearly 22 games, and we won the league. You know, so that's something that 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 always is the mindset of those players out there: is that you just take it game by game by game, and they're physically and they're mentally ready for them. But Bose, I think they're on the way up. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I think they're a very very good competitive side. I think they need to. I, I was speaking to a a Bohemians fan there earlier on they're just not converting the chances that they get Dylan Watts had a, had a great opportunity True. it was a great save yeah. from Gary Rogers, but at the same time 
if he had just hit it low, yeah. could have put it past them. It's it's the small margins. It is, it is indeed. Like we, we, you know, speaking to fans there afterwards, and everyone's talking about how composed and awkward. But then you know, you think back on the game afterwards, and you have the chance in the fir- in the across here in this goal yeah. that went straight across the goal. You're thinking, how the hell is that going in? You're waiting yeah. for the celebrations. You have the Watts one. You have the Stokes one as well. You know, there are three three big chances. One of those goes in. It changes the the composure of the game. But that's mm. football. Hey. Mm. Dundalk, from, to wrap it up now from a Dundalk point of view, you must be absolutely delighted the way things are going, you know, right up the top. Hell for hell, hell for hell, um, scrap really with, with uh, your friends down south. So it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's all set up for an absolutely fascinating summer of football, isn't it? It is really, and you have to remember that the, the real chunk in the business end of the season is going to be done before July. You know, we go into Europe then and like... You know, I know Waterford have had a heavy defeat, but they don't have Europe to contend with this year, and that could be a big thing. That could be a big push for them. Our our eyes could be focused on two different things, and Waterford could sneak back up into that table. However, it's it's going, it's looking. Now, I'm not going to be naive enough and say that it, it's it's going to be finished, but look, it's it, it's in that vein that it could go to a, a Cork and Dock finale again, and it's going to be a case of who slips first. Derry City have lost at home for the first time Dundalk and Cork are still unbeaten at home that's that's a huge factor and uh, we need to keep that strong momentum going but at the end of the day what resulted in the the, the results over the between Cork and Dundalk over the past couple of years have dictated where the title has gone so that that's, mi- that's that mini league really oh yeah it, 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 it is that's how tight it's going to be and you know you look at the, the game against Dundalk uh, and Cork last year in October if Dundalk had won it, they would have been right on, Dund- on Cork City's tail once again after a 19-point gap. Uh, it was a one-all draw. Cork went on to win the league, and congratulations to them. But, you know, it's those fine Small little margins. margins, and that's what's going to win the league this year. It's not going to be a runaway leader because the 10-team lead won't dictate that. It's not going to happen. Well, it all sets for a fascinating summer of, of football. We'll have it all covered on Irish Football Fan TV. Make sure you subscribe. Come on, we need to get those subs coming. And uh, we'll talk to you all very soon.